Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about wonderful things that are happening today, tomorrow, and pretty much throughout the weekend. But one of the things that are that great that are happening this weekend is a little thing called the rain. Uh, I'll get to that in a little bit, but let me talk. Uh, let me give you a couple teases. Uh, we got Flagship Friday. We got some news items. A couple dramatic things happening here in Missoula. Um, we also have uh, some city council report. I only have a clip for you guys, but I have a lot to talk about. But we also have some events and some new movies are coming out, so I'm going to prejudge them for pre-critics. So without further ado, let's talk about weather. It is currently 48 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 70. Um, oh, your high is going to be 47. Obviously, it's higher than that. So um, it looks like the high is 48. So uh, today it's only going to get colder and colder. Uh, it's pretty much going to rain if it isn't already raining now. I just checked it outside uh, about a couple minutes ago. It doesn't seem like it's raining, but you can expect rains to have happened pretty much today and partially tonight as well. Um, MCAT will be uh, st uh, streaming a football game tonight as well, so uh, hopefully the uh, weather will clear by then. Um, Saturday this weekend, your lows are going to be in the 40s. Your highs are going to be in the 50s. Um, you're going to have some nice sun Sunday showers, fall showers happening this weekend as well, and then by Monday, you're going to be partly sunny as all the kids return to school where they'll be inside learning. So that's kind of what's going on with your weather. Let's talk about some of the things that are happening in Missoula. Um, yeah, there's three controversies in Missoula of late, um, and I'm not talking about the, uh, the two uh, um, murder suspects. Um, this is, has to do with what's happening at the university, what's happening with uh, the mayoral candidates, and also uh, more university stuff. So, uh, UM School of Journal uh, Journalism rejects a conservative speaker, uh, Mike Adams. He is the uh, professor from um, um, University of Northern uh, uh, Carolina, North Carolina, sorry, Mike Adams, for being known to target LGBT. LGBT people, um, P Muslims and feminists, and has described transgender people as mentally ill. He, a uh, big donor for the School of Journal uh, Journalism, Maria Cole, says that Adams um, has fought for the First Amendment and believes in freedom of speech, and is shocked that the Dean of School Journalism would deny his presence during the Cole Lecture Series that uh, throughout the years, of course, you can read the whole article online as well, um, throughout the years, $1.2 million has been donated uh, to the School of Journalism for the last 15 years through uh, Maria Cole and her uh, um, and her foundation. So anyways, another big thing that seems to be happening is Lisa Tripke's uh, mayoral candidate who spent money through public assistance on new homes and cars. Um, the Missouri newspaper seems to be pushing her on this quite a bit and when they asked for a comment she said that she's done commenting on this part of her life and that's kind of what's happening there. You can read it all in the Missouri. I'm just going to briefly go over some of the headlines for that, from what I saw. Also, uh, there was a rapper that was supposed to come into town for the uh, um, Halloween lip party that was going to be hosted next weekend at the Adams Center, but uh, uh, who, uh, but unfortunately, he got into a certain um, a problem with uh, beating his ex, his pregnant ex girlfriend, and a couple of students at the university would have protested his presence at there, especially since uh, Ms. Uh, University of Montana had that uh, reputation of sexual assault in the past. So uh, that's kind of what's happening controversially here in the city of Missoula. There's just a lot of stuff going on. Of course, AMCAT filmed the UM intern president Sheila Stern's update on the budget cuts Wednesday morning for two live sessions. You guys can watch that online at MCAT.org. Um, they're talking about what uh, programs they had to cut, what kind of things they have to uh, deal with in this next spring season. Um, one of the biggest things is that they had to basically deny a couple of the provost lecture series a couple months ago, and a couple of the faculty at the University of Montana are uh, uh, using legal action against the university as well. So there's a lot of stuff going on, um, at, uh, pretty much mostly at the university. So you guys can check that out, go to the Missoulian and all that all stuff like that. But in the state, a lot of things are happening in reaction to uh, Trump's um, President Donald Trump's uh, policies in terms of the farm bill and other ranchers as well. Many ranchers are conflicted about the government and Trump's lack of efforts to reform the agricultural industry, uh, particularly the large corporations that run meat and meat packing industries. When started out as draining the swamp quickly has become a way to distance them th themselves from the Ob Obama era plans to further regulate cattle sales for fairness. Um, the reform uh, stalled for several years back um, before being authorized into a rule by the USDA in the, uh, in the last weeks of President Barack Obama's tenure 
tenure, the Trump USDA put on the rules on hold until finally abandoning them altogether on Tuesday. Um, federal price sets are just enough to cover the cost of feed, fuel, and uh, medicine with little profit margin um, for some of the uh, uh, ranchers in the communities. Uh, many corporations have an edge on the in the market because they control distribution and transportation for large amounts of cattle to be taken off, uh, but with certain regulations in place, it makes it harder for ranchers to uh, compete. Uh, sometimes you, d uh, so that's kind of what's happening with there, and that was in the Billings Gazette. Um, you can check that out. Um, in national news, as California wildfires continue to grow, agriculture in Col uh, California is at a standstill. Um, with $1 billion in damage already through insurance claims, uh, one in third uh, being um, wa one third of the industry being wine and tourism. Um, many seasonal workers do not have jobs, and the long term impacts of the fire season will resonate for decades to come. Uh, many mi uh, migrant, workers wor migrant workers who depend on these jobs need this money to say sustain their families. Uh, many of these uh, vineyards are still standing, are at a crossroads between evacuation orders and being able to salvage what they can. Many vineyard owners say that they would pay employees regardless of not being able to pick grapes the past week. Um, but in terms of the fire, most mandatory evacuations throughout the region has been lifted, um, but about 22,000 people in uh, Sonoma County were displaced Thursday morning, either because their homes are still at risk or, burned or are in the burn zone. The fire destroyed at least 5,700 structures, including more than 2,800 homes in the city of Santa Rosa alone. Uh, officials call it the deadliest week in California history with at least 42 confirmed fatalities. Um, and this was a mixture between the NPR and LA Times. There's a lot going on in California. There's a lot going on in and around uh, Montana as well. So that's kind of give you a, a, a brief run over of what's going on. But let's bring it back. I got some new programs um, for you guys for this weekend. You can check it out. Uh, the, we have a brand new uh, program from the Missoula City band. It's number nine, so they're coming down to the last part of the season, and then of course Ron always puts together a nice little compilation of the best of uh, Missoula City Band, and also we got a couple other, we got uh, some clips from the Peace Fest, we got some um, Craig Jones from Glo Global Public Health, we also got um, some Norman McLean Fest. So Norman McLean Festival, there's going to be a four-part series happening on MCAT. This is part two, and then finally we got some Equius, there's, uh, there was a uh, basically a film festival devoted to horses um, last month, and we uh, MCAT filmed it. So we filmed some of the uh, old uh, horse ranchers and horse breeders um, from all around. Uh, so it was a very really interesting thing, and I got suggest you guys check out all these new programs. And when to come back, I'm going to talk about some uh, programs that are going to be premiering at the theaters that you may want to skip. So um, stay at home, watch these MCAT programs, and uh, let's skip the movies. Uh, so without further ado, here's some of the new programs that are going to be on MCAT. And when I come back, we'll talk about Pre-Critic. <laughs> carries it in a way that gives it a liveliness and its own force of rhythm and texture. And the Nusach does another thing, which is really interesting. It places the music in time. So that if you were blindfolded and you listened for a little while, you would know by hearing the melodies used in the prayer whether it was morning or evening, whether it was weekday or Sabbath, whether it was an ordinary day of the year or a festival, and I'm going to give you an example. So in the morning we sing the introductory prayers in something called Torah Bracha Minor. La da 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 da
some groups that have done use just GPS units and put them on the back of scooters where, that the health workers use. And, it, and, it, you know, and you kind of put it in the map and you can just see where, where people are. Now that's just for identifying pathways. But yeah, uh, we have um, talked about uh, the cell phone coverage because you can probably, you know where the cell phones are and you know where people move and that sort of thing. Now that's huge data. You know that that requires you know a lot of computing power, but people do it you know, all the time. You know that's. I really think that for Norman, that that straining for a logos was inextricably involved with his love of his brother, the loss of the brother, and the attempt to put that in a meaningful context. Um, and I wish that he could have found in fire and in discussing fire <laughs> some equivalent of that logos, but he couldn't. And I think neither could John. I'm going to stop there because I want to just raise these issues and hope that there's time for questions, answers, and a theologian is following me. So um, I expect a learned disquisition on uh, the problems of my interpretation of John and of Norman McLean. And then the trainer called Mr. Jacobs and said, I've got this guy from California and he will come over. Let's give him one more chance. And that was his chance to save those genetics. And Silvano wins the six million dollars. And I was here in Missoula, Montana with that M up here on the hill. And I was doing a demonstration here on the day that he was entered in the Arlington Million. A million of the winner. And I stopped my demonstration. And Pat and I went out and got on our bus with a TV. And they had it all programmed so that I could get the Arlington Million on TV. And he won the Arlington Million while I was right here uh, in Missouri. We went on up into Canada, etc. Then I was to learn that her next foal, Sabiango, won in the same week a Group 1 in Baden-Baden, Germany. This mare produced two Group 1 winners, and I bought her for a song. I bought her for very little money. California bread. In a world where anything is possible, a man is getting sick and tired of the weather, of those rains that happen. Um, inconveniently when he doesn't have an umbrella. This movie is called Geostorm. You watch as Gerald Butler uh, punches Mother Nature in the face as in this movie he decides to be like, hey man, I don't like it raining at this particular time at particular day. Stop it. And Mother Nature's like, you can't do anything about it. So the government, they come together and they form a whole bunch of satellites around the planet Earth so they can control the weather. But unfortunately, you should never mess with Mother Nature. Coming tonight, this weekend, is Man vs. Weather, otherwise known as Geostorm. For the makers of a sci-fi original movie comes the Geostorm, starring the, that one guy who has become synonymous with good and bad movies to the point of B-list acting lists. Um, watch Gerald Butler in this movie where the government controls the weather, but what could possibly go wrong? Wow, wow, wow. Could you imagine a movie that, that talks about something so enormously powerful that doesn't cause problems? Have you ever watched a movie where that happens, where just like, oh, you know, let's talk about this one thing. It's like, what could possibly go wrong? Welcome to the movies, people. Watch as a continuation as these geostorms attack popular landmarks throughout this whole entire movie, making you go, yeah, I'm going to go watch Medea. Up next, we got The Snowman. It's cold out there, folks, and it's only going to get colder. Um, watch The Snowman, yet another mystery movie based on a book that follows the man as he looks for a killer targeting women who are not in his liking. Talk about somebody who's been put in the friend zone one too many times. Now it's time for his revenge against certain women um, based on snow men type stuff. That's his calling card. That's just kind of what the thing is. So, um, you know, like it, with anything of these mysteries movies is that as soon as you figure out who the killer is, you don't care about the movie anymore. It's one of those movies that... Uh, uh, you know, like it's like the Orient, you know, Murder on the Orient Express. At, at at some point, everyone already knows who done it, and it's not just one person. Um, moving on, <laughs> uh, 
yet another movie you may not have heard of, Wonderstruck, which is a New York best time seller. So you know it's going to be good. Um, it's ba uh, it's located in New York and told from two storylines from two different time periods. Wow. Both characters are motivated by a book called, you guessed it, Wonderstruck. Uh, so get Wonderstruck with these tale of coming of age in New York as we explored stuff from two deaf kids. You have the makings of an Oscar movie. You got you got the big city, you got disabilities, you got coming of age, and you got orphans. What a great story that you will cannot miss but probably have seen before. Um, disclaimer, I do not hate orphan children with disabilities and you should not judge me on that. But this is called Pre-Critic and you've probably seen this movie before and any movie that's set in like in New York in those big cities and it glorifies the beauty of those big cities it it has a tendency to uh, be an Oscar bid so watch a whole bunch of movies as they fight for the Oscar bid who knows maybe a uh, Geostorm might be uh, nominated for sound mixing you never know but anyways that's it for pre-critic I got a movie I'm excited to show you guys um, it's a short film that a couple of the kids from um, Washington Middle School and myself uh, star in. So without further ado, here is Carver. All right, class, today we're going to have you find a hundred new words that start with the letter Z, and then we're going to write a short essay using those words. So good luck on your essay. Hope you have fun on that assignment. <laughs> what assignment? What? Wait, what are you doing? None of your business. Snitch. What are you doing? If you leave, I'll tell the teacher. Go ahead. Wait, be better. So what? What's wrong with the suspension? We get to get out of school? Well, we were like in intense watch. We have to do more work. Oh, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't go anywhere until you change it. Well, you're not really learning anything while the teacher is sleeping. <gasps> yeah, why don't you just learn to chill? Let's go. <laughs> I don't got a good feeling about this. What did I do? Where are the students? Uh, I don't, I don't know. What, what should we do? Don't worry. This is what I'm paid for. Ew, there's no candy. Or gum. Guys! What? Let's go. This is stupid. He didn't have to come. It's not like I had the choice. What's wrong? Guys. What's wrong? Someone's coming. It's Carver. The last kid that got caught by Carver. Carver, Carver, Carver. Got a Saturday detention. We never saw him after that. Who's Carver? The meanest. The biggest. The rudest. Teacher ever. He's coming. Okay, when are we still doing here? Let's go. Tell me where Miss White and Miss Marler is. 
I'd prefer not. It'd be a shame if there anything happened to you on your permanent record. You are a good student, am I right? Yes. Interesting, interesting. So, if I were a little girl, where would I be? Is there anything you can tell me of where they might be? Of course not, sir. You wait here. If you move, and I come back here, and you're not here, it'll be worse. I think he's okay. Where? Did you work? Okay, help me. Kids, I see you. I will find you and you will be mine. I lost some students. How could you let them get away? I don't know. But they'll be back tomorrow. If I don't get them then, I'll get them the next day. Or the next day. I swear. Hey, welcome back. Don't think about it too much. Up next, we got some city council stuff happening. Um, kicking things off, uh, parks and conservation. A park uh, security system is effective in reducing vandalism and theft. Former Missoula Regional Park will have uh, office areas, maintenance equipment, and concessions. The staff has found security to be of considerable help in protecting taxpayers' investments. Unfortunately, there was only one bidder, and this is going to go back to a rebidding process when the sole bidder did not negotiate a lower price, so they were we're looking at um, basically looking for any security systems or security companies in town to uh, submit to see if they w wanted to take on a security job at Fort Missoula Regional Park and the new concessions areas and they only had one bidder who uh, met the deadline which was September 12th. Um, but they're reopening it again. They're going to do a rebidding process. So if you're a security company out there or know of the people who are working security, you guys still have time to bid and get a job uh, as security through the Fort Missoula Regional Park System. So the city will be doing a new bidding process that helps uh, w with the help of Jackson um, c Contracting Group, which will help look for some as well. But you, it's still open for anybody in the security company to um, work on that as well. So land use and planning is the next meeting I, I did, and this one does have a quote for you guys. Upon annexation zoning, uh, the property owners propose uh, the to proceed with a townhome exemption development conditional use in order to construct single family and duplex resident units in subject properties which are located across from Hellgate Elementary Schools near Flynn Lane. So as someone who went to Hellgate Elementary over 20 years ago, there was just farmland back in those days uh, from Flynn to Reserve Street minus, you know, of course the shoppings at an RV park. Basically if you, that whole area was just open farmland. Either it was the Doherty Ranchers, the ranch next door it w yeah so 
basically, uh, Steve Jacobson um, is concerned for his parents who uh, live out who live out in those areas as well. So here's Steve Jacobson. But the question is, and I hear some comments from the council members about how much density do we want, and does this really fit in the area? And uh, obviously, at this point, you know, it, it doesn't, but in the future, it may. My folks, you know, at some point, uh, you know, they're getting on in years and they're going to end up selling their property and it'll be developed out. And, uh, uh, of course, we start to set a precedent uh, of uh, what it's going to be, you know, with this particular property. Considering that they, you know, just had rezoned the one in, in the corner of Flynn and uh, Siren Road, RT10, we were thinking that, well, that's what it's, what it'll end up being. And even at that, you could build, I would imagine, well, roughly four houses an acre, and, uh, you know, so you'd be maybe 44 homes in there, which, of course, is uh, a much higher density than anything that's, that's close. Uh, so anyways, um, even if you folks had, you know, if you had some questions for me, I'm fairly well versed in the area and can probably shed some light on a few things. So, great. Thank All right. So that was Steve uh, Jacobson um, commenting on some of the uh, growth that is happening up in the Flynn Lane uh, Street areas. Um, Let's see, anything else I need to say on this? Uh, that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll have for uh, some of the city council uh, committee meetings that happened on Wednesday. Um, they, Of course, they did move forward on developing this area. Um, otherwise, it would have just been a lot of lots owned by the city in general. So that's just kind of those... Um, that w that's usually what happens in, in terms of that. Let's talk about some events that are happening for Friday. Uh, I got a brand new art clip for you guys, so you, uh, ha you have that to look forward to, and it's going to be the Clay Studio of Missoula. So I'll talk about that a little bit after uh, Friday events. So let's start off with some Friday events. Uh, school is out, and they're still doing camps um, at the Missoula Insectarium and, of course, Missoula Parks and Recreation. You can guys can still jump on that, I hope. Um, some of them started like at 9 10 a.m. or whatever, so that you just be aware of that. Um, then, of course, rains are happening today, so which is a good excuse for people to go inside Bitterroot Gymnastics or uh, Mismo Gymnastics or Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. There's like three different places to enjoy some indoor fun because Missoula is definitely one of those uh, towns that people like to get out and recreate and get um, down and busy. Um, I don't know why I said that. That was stupid. Uh, but, yeah, you guys can do that um, indoors uh, with, a, with the safety of that and, and safety of foam pits, so they're going to be basically hell having doing that all as well um have you ever want, went to an rv park and not been creeped out well uh, they're emphasizing this with a haunted rv park at lolo hot springs starting this morning basically pretty much happening all day it, this is uh get your third day free this is happening pretty much this weekend there's going to be bobbing for apple bobbing for apples caramel apples um not bar bobbing for caramel apples that would be terrible um pumpkin carving uh face painting uh trick or treating costume contest and then of course there's going to be drink specials at the bar um, near in the Little Hot Springs, and yeah, Zombie Antidote, um, Racco Ribs is going to be at from some food specials that are happening in Lolo Hot Springs. So this is a haunted RV park, so check that out. Missoula Public Library is hosting Storytime and Tiny Tales at 10.30 a.m. to help kids learn some reading and doing some um, storytelling as well. Um, Science at 11 Spectre Discovery Centers is doing lights and optics, among many other things that they do there. Th there's more. That's usually like their one um, highlighted event, but they also do a whole bunch of science experiments. Family's First Children's Museum is doing some science as well from 11 to 12. Missoula Public Library, once again, at 12 is doing um, watercolor painting classes for uh, I think about 8 or 10 people in that class and you must be 18 years or older to attend and they also have yarns for people who like to make their own clothing or learn how to make their own clothing and you get to hang out and do that kind of stuff. Um, if you're interested in card games like Cribbage or Bridge, they meet at the Senior Center starting around 12.30 p.m., so you can check that out. Um, and then open hours in the Makerspace open up at the Missoula Public Library. And if you're attending those classes at the Missoula Public Library for the 3D printer, open hours in the Makerspace are the place to be during those times so you can 3D print some stuff. Um, 
President Lecture Series is, ha is an ongoing series at the University of Montana where they bring experts from all around the world to talk about their certain subject of field, and this is a seminar. And seminars are usually associated with a classroom type settings where it's a lot of Q&A and you get to talk to these um, experts about what they know. And the lecture seminar featuring Ronald Gregor Sonny, William H. Uh, Sewell Jr., Distinguished University Professor of History and Professor of Political Sciences at the University of Michigan and Senior Researcher, National Research University Higher School of Economics, St. Petersburg, Russia, is speaking on Koba, the young Stalin, the making of a revolutionary. Uh, the seminar is free and open to the public, so learn a little bit about Marxism, communism, and all that stuff starting at 3 p.m. at the University of Montana. And I believe it is free and open to the public, and you can look up more information by going to umt.edu. Uh, Missoula Innocence Project Open House. Uh, if you have somebody in jail that is, has been wrongfully accused of a crime or is in jail for uh, has been in jail for too long and think they've, they've served their time, Montana Innocence Project Open House is in the Alexander Blo uh, Blewett Three, the third School of Law building. The bond and uh, the board and staff of the Montana Innocence Project invite you to come learn about their work and it's free to the innocents and prevent wrongful convictions as well to celebrate this year's award recipients. Join the uh, atrium for the Alexander Blue with the third School of Law to meet the legal team and learn about justice and injustice in Montana. And that starts at 5.30 p.m. tonight. Um, Tom Catmull, I just want to give a shout out to Tom Catmull. His uh, two kids always come through here, MCAT, they're MCAT kids, um, but he's doing a uh, show at 6 o'clock at Ten Spoon Winery. Um, you can check that out. He plays some cool acoustic music. Um, there's also some more Poetry Slam happening tonight. If you miss Wednesday night's poetry, uh, All City Poetry Slam is happening at Shakespeare and Company um, October 20th tonight. Uh, join the Missoula All City Poetry Slam hosted by uh, Ray Birdie of Hellgate High School. Sign up for reading slots available at the beginning of the event, and it goes from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, Missoula Haunted House is ongoing. It will be going on tonight and throughout the, um, Friday and Saturday. And then, of course, next weekend, it will basically start on Friday night and go all the way in th all the way through October 31st. And it's going to be at the Missoula Fairgrounds, um, Montana Haunted House, and all of them are at 7 p.m. And then the kid events basically start happening um, th the first uh, weekend, the weekend before uh, Halloween, which is 4 to 6 p.m. Um, kid events where it's not as scary for some of the younger kids. Um, Bear Bait Dance presents love song and so basically they're all dancing contemporary dance and love songs yeah and uh so uh now yeah, that's happening at 8 p.m tonight um i believe it's going to be in their basement and you'll be able to see signs throughout there uh in in the par tv building so if you go into the par tv bu building and you're just walking along the side of it you look through those windows and there's a little um, dance studio basement area that's usually where they host the bear bay dance uh things there as well high ceilings it's a great place for this kind of stuff so um, it's basically, that's kind of what's happening for your Friday events. Uh, let me just kind of go over some of the other stuff. Um, cheap date night at the Missoula Public Library. Um, if you want to have a date night and you want to keep it cheap, um, you go to the Missoula Public Library tonight at 7. Uh, the Wilma is doing Warren Miller's Line of Descent. It's going to be a uh, winter sports film. Uh, Dan Savage, Hump! Film Festival at the Roxy. It's going to be film and comedy. As You Like It is an ongoing uh, show at the Par TV Building's Massacre Theater. Um, and it's a Shakespeare play that is being performed by the UM Arts uh, UM Theater, uh, wait, wait, UM Arts Theater and Dance Department. Okay, and then of course, you know, we got the actual presidential lecture series happening um, tonight at 8 p.m. at the University of Montana. It's going to be a lecture. It's going to be great. I believe they usually do this in the Denison um, Theater, so y formerly known as the University Theater, just next to the Music Recital Hall, and that's at 8 p.m. tonight as well. Um, there's a Living Dead Drag show at Union Club tonight at 8 p.m. Um, Sunrise Saloon has country music by Showdown. Joan Zen is going to be at the Union Club after the drag show. You may want to check that out. Joan Zen is a uh, wonderful musician here in town, and she knows how to wail. Um, so Whiskey Shivers is going to be the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be bluegrass music, and it's going to be rock. So that kind of concludes everything that you guys need to know about what's happening Friday night. I know there's a lot going on, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so the, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot going on this weekend as well. But I have a new art clip for you guys, and this is being featured at the Clay Studio of Missoula. It is the George and Phil Show Clay Studio 2017, and it will end October 27th. So you only have a week to check this out. So without further ado, here is the Clay Studio.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some Saturday events that are happening. This is the second to the last chance to check out all of those farmers markets that are happening in Missoula. So you got the farmers market at the Red X's, you got the um, Clark Fork River Market under the bridge, under the, the Higgins Bridge particularly, and then of course the People's Market which is on Pine Street. Um, and of course, these are the kind of like the days that I don't know if you should go or not because these are kind of like the dwindling down days that um, are kind of sad because if you're used to seeing pretty much um, Saturday markets pretty much every Saturday like myself, these are usually the, the sad, the, the dog days of farmer's markets. So um, if you want to check it out, great. Um, but just be aware that's something that you may see this weekend as well. So knock out Montana Fires, um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, starting 10 a.m. tomorrow morning is um, they're basically uh, if you've been looking for a way to give back to your community and help those affected by fires um, join us as they play some knocker ball so the whole idea is you put it on giant um, inflatable clear balls um, and you run into each other it's for five dollars every participant will be able to roll flip somersault and bump into the other players the proceeds will be going to the wildland firefighter foundation and the Missoula County United Way to uh, support the affected uh, specifically in the Little Peak Fire and Rice Ridge Fires by Sealy Lake. So support all that stuff and knock out Montana's fires. Um, the right stuff, and that's uh, not right-handed, but right stuff is going to be at the Living Art of Montana, hosted by Jack Shiflett, the Living Art of Montana drop-in Saturday workshop facilitated by Jack. Uh, the right stuff is for writers and non-writers alike. Surprise. Um, well, <laughs> they'll use Easy Guide writing prompts to explore writing as uh, a tool for self-expression. Offered free to charge for adults 18 or older dealing with an illness or loss. Um, no experience necessary for questions you can call them at 549-5329 living art is a place to create share and heal and if you want more information go to livingartofmontana.org um, and then of course from 10 30 to 12 30 p.m um, actually that's how, how long it is so that's the uh, the right stuff so it's a two-hour thing living art of montana check it out a Tip a, ca uh, tip a cop to benefit Special Olympics in Montana. Red, Ro uh, Red Robin Gourmet Burgers. Um, it's going to be for at 11 o'clock. Local law enforcement members and Special Olympic athletes will be serving food and raising money for Special Olympics. Uh, come thank them for their service and give them a tip to support the this important cause. Uh, Fall Family Fest at the Fort. Uh, hosted by Parks and Recreation. The Fort Missoula Regional Park um, are, is doing an annual Fall Family Festival at Fort Missoula Regional Park. Um, something that they like to say and write over and over again. This event is uh, based on a good old-fashioned um, fall family fun. They like saying that too. Activities include hay rides, cider press, music, and sal uh, music by the salamanders, fun and games, educational activities, food, and more. Attendees are encouraged to come in costume and participate in our costume parade and dance party. Um, One dollar suggested donation goes to Parks and Recreation Scholarship Fund, helping Missoula kids get outdoor and active. Bases covered is going to be at the Missoula Senior Center's benefit concert. Uh, speaking of benefits, there's a lot of things happening this Saturday to benefit a lot of people, and it is the season to get out and about. Um, join Saturday night for a rock and dance party to benefit, Mon to benefit the Mon Missoula Senior Center's five dollar admission. To all goes to provide activities and services to folks 50 and over in the Missoula area, and this is at 6 p.m. in the Missoula Senior Center. Um, and then here are some of your uh, Saturday night events happening. Um, 
Mizzou Haunted House is ongoing this weekend as well. You got Milky Chance is going to be at the Wilma. As You Like It is continuing on this weekend as well at the University of Montana. Um, Massacre Theater, Missoula Folklore Society, Contra Dance is going to be the UC Ballroom starting at 8 p.m. Salsa 406 is going to be at the Dark Horse Bar. Um, movie Cult, Carrie. So if you, uh, th um, the Roxy ho hosts Movie Cult Nights, and it's going to be at the Roxy tomorrow night. Um, you got karaoke at VFW. You got Lolo Creek Band, country music at the Sunrise Saloon. You got Cash for Junkers at Union Club. And wrapping up the night, you got um, hip hop at the Top Hat Lounge with Ritz, with uh, Sam Lachow and Eric uh, Bidness. Biddies. 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 Okay. So that's pretty much it for all your events happening. <laughs> this weekend. Um, there's a lot going on for sure. Um, if you want more information, you can go to um, MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is your resource for everything Missoula and looking for things to do. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that because that's all you need to know. If you want more information about uh, Missoula um, in terms of uh, um, archiving any kind of videos that MCAT has done in the past, you go to MCAT.org and you can find out everything Missoula. So uh, Missoula Kana, as I like to call it, um, you can find that out by going on to MCAT.org. I'm going to patent that, Missoula Kana, from now on. So wake up Missoula com slash wake up Missoula. So nice for me to write it out twice. All you got to do is Google wake up Missoula and I will pop up everywhere. So you can subscribe to me on YouTube. You can like me on Facebook and you follow me on Twitter. All the key words are wake up Missoula. So wake up Missoula. It's time for you to get busy because there's a lot of things happening this weekend and I'm excited for the weekend as well. So for wake up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you for joining me and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see you Wednesday with a lot more fun things to show you. Mm -hmm.